Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to A Tea with Lee. Today, we are honored and uh, with great pleasure to have Xiaolong uh, from Egypt to share with us uh, his story in learning Chinese and also training Aikido. So, Xiaolong, welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lee. Howdy. Good, good. Howdy. And you? Fine, thank you. Okay, please. Um, how and why you practice Chinese and also your training Aikido? I have started the learning Chinese in 2009 in Egypt here because our relationship with China was very good at that time. And it still is very good relationship. Uh, this was my uh, my uncle advice for me. I was very young. I was almost uh, 17 years old. Then I started uh, to study Chinese in the University of uh, Language and the University of uh, NGMs, Faculty of Language and Translation. So I uh, chose the Chinese department. Uh, in our faculty, there is many languages, uh, in French, English, German, maybe more than 14 languages. So I started to uh, Chinese. Uh, in, in this time, it was uh, not popular in Egypt to study Chinese. So um, we in, in our class we was uh, almost uh, one hundred and fifty uh, students trying to study Chinese, uh, and uh, there was in this time almost uh, many many job opportunities and very a few of us uh, who can speak Chinese in Egypt in this time, and I was I finished uh, my studies in uh, two thousand twelve. And I started my new job um, in uh, first Chinese it was in fiber fiber class. Uh, and the prime minister uh, start uh, he, he came to the ceremony of the opening of the company it was very uh, large company and it was a and it was in this time uh, the biggest investment in Egypt. So now you are so working a uh, Chinese company located in Egypt. Yes, uh, I, I worked with a Chinese company for 10 years almost. And then after that, I preferred to do uh, freelancing. Now I'm working as a freelancer. I can participate in conference on uh, exhibitions. Like uh, uh, last time I was in edX. It was international edX. Uh, a lot of military uh, dedications come to Egypt and they offer their uh, products, uh, weapons, something like this. And I participate in this uh, as salesman who can speak Chinese. Okay, cool. So, so I you work are also mm -hmm. so yeah. you are also building so, some trading business between Egypt and China, right? Yeah, I I work as a translator now, and I I I intend to uh, make uh, some business between uh, our here our businessmen and China. I try to find a way. Cool and. Um... So your translation job is uh, mainly focused on Arabic to Chinese and Chinese to Arabic, right? Yes, most of translation here because for local people, they can speak Arabic, of course. And English uh, occasionally, from time to time. Okay, cool. And uh, this is your basic Chinese uh, the study story. So uh, right now, how is the situation in Egypt? Quite many guys... Uh, prefer to study Chinese or Chinese is still like a minor language in the school? No, you know, sometimes now with the Chinese government funded a lot of uh, scholarship for people to more study Chinese and funded a lot of institute to open um, Chinese department. And uh, now a lot of uh, students now study Chinese in Egypt. We can say that we are the most... Um, we are uh, our our people who study Chinese here in Egypt is the most. Uh, uh, in, if we compare the numbers uh, in Africa, we are the leading numbers <laughs> because a lot of uh, students study Chinese in Africa here in Egypt more than any African countries. Cool, and uh, okay. So thank you for sharing about uh, uh, your story on Chinese studying and also the situation of learning Chinese in Egypt. And beyond that, so uh, could you share with us that uh, how and why you so passionate in training Aikido? Or 
you know, yeah, first, of martial arts. Uh, right? mm -hmm. First of all, I I was when I was young, I was uh, watching a lot of American movies, especially Steven Seagal, and I didn't understand what his uh, fight technique he used. But I was uh, by chance I I was uh, watching TV about uh, Aikido documentary. Uh, it was in uh, National Geographic. Wow, I I feel very compassionate about this art. And I, I listened to all the story of Steven Seagal when he, he studied Aikido in Japan and he teached it for uh, Japanese students. And I feel I'm very loved in, and fall in love with this art. And I typed in my notes that I will study Aikido someday. And after that, in 2015, I started to search for uh, Aikido master in Egypt. But because of my work, it was far away from the capital, Cairo. Uh, I delayed for one year. After that, I found uh, the best one who can teach me Aikido. It was my master now. It's called uh, Mr. Uh, Shihan Muhammad Said. He is uh, one of the first students here in Egypt who study Aikido from uh, Japan master. Uh, after that, I I was uh, I, I, I I decided to go there and hit watch this style. And after that, I feel, oh, wow, it's a good, it's a great. And I started to participate in trainings um, until now. Uh, but sometimes, because of my work, um, uh, sometimes I leave, I leave Cairo. So I, I, I take um, rest from my training. And it is a very bad feeling when you uh, leave your love, uh, train, lovely training, when you decide to be uh, commitment to your training. And but because of your work and your life, Something sometimes it degrades your uh, your potential or your goals, you know. Um, you know, uh, after that, uh, because of my work, I I I, I try to handle it, uh, and my work was far away from Cairo, almost two and a half hours. And after I settled down in this work, I decided to travel from uh, Port Said. Port Said it is a city that I work in to Cairo to complete my training. You know, it was very hard to complete it at first. And after my first black belt, I felt very good. And I achieved my first goal in Aikido. Then I I changed it. I, I always changed my, my career position from uh, another city to Cairo to complete my my training. And until now, I am in Cairo and I feel it's good. Uh, now I rank it in Aikido two dan. I have two black belts. Almost since uh, 2020. Um, um, and my my third uh, black belt exam, it was in last uh, in this um, almost in November, end of November. But I didn't participate in it because I have uh, injury in my knees, and I have rested for more than almost one year and nine months. And I decided to get back my my level again. I'll give back my my style again and my skills again because I feel that you know the skill when you are complete your studies and the training for a long time and you have a rest your carpet is down again. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I I told myself that rank it's not important but you must be in this fair level to get this exam. I can uh, uh, um, train every day and the okay it is good level for a study for exam but it's, in real life it is bad. So. I, I decided to uh, get my living in real life and for exam and for everything. And uh, so on the way of training, uh, Aikido, so what kind of mistake you made, for example? Uh, mm. I made uh, quite some mistakes uh, on my way of training uh, Wushu, the Chinese martial arts. Uh, I always mm. forget uh, uh, about, uh, you know, the background. So for most of us, we focus on upper world. For example, our arms. We, fo mm. we forgot our legs. Yeah. We focus on what is in front of us. But we use the tool, forget how to shift our backward leg. So what a specific mistake you made in your Aikido training. And Aikido, when I, I take some time because of my work, um, I feel that my my work let work uh, st uh, 
on my legs. Um, this bed uh, to move and shift from, uh, you know, we were using a kid waist and a big butt to to uh, get away from any bunch, uh, any kicks or something like this. And some sometimes my footwork is becoming bad <laughs> because I, I I have rest from time to time. And uh, when I come back, my my coach told me that you you use power and power is not uh, good to use in training. You use the style more than te the technique more than power because if you use power and technique, it's not fair. It does not that mean your technique is weak. But if you use the technique without power, that means your technique is very very perfect. Can you highlight uh, what you are saying again about the technique and power? In Aikido, we don't use power. If you use power in Aikido, it means your technique is not perfect. That means you, you make a mistake in, in some details in your in your technique. Because Aikido has no power in, uh, in you can use your muscle. It's not again, it's not muscle for uh, muscle. It is technique for muscle. Um because okay. I, I must make uh, the power of uh, of the, my opponent in reverse way make it no power okay so you mean you are taking the power from your opponent and just yes. shift the direction of the power of your opponent and uh, yes. release on himself or herself yes yes exactly like uh, like tai chi yes exactly like tai chi yeah yes. exactly yes. actually aikido in my research uh, indeed have a strong relationship with Tai Chi. This is yeah. what we said in Tai Chi also we said uh, mm. taking four pounds of your power from yourself to shift the path of a thousand pounds power from your opponent. Yes, exactly. Sometimes I feel that uh... Uh, Japanese uh, culture and the Chinese culture, there are many comments in uh, martial arts, especially uh, something about shifting uh, the opponent power uh, uh, in Tai Chi and in Aikido. There's some lot of common uh, techniques. So, uh, do you have any like uh, um, situation that uh, you may defend yourself? Uh, by the technique of Aikido. You you have yes, a situation uh, that you are uh, on the street, some people made trouble with you and then you know you had some this the kind of trouble or not yet. Actually I didn't use it uh, too much only in one situation. Mm -hmm. My I have my broken arm, it is only one arm. Uh, uh, someone in it was I, I was uh, I, I see conflict between the two people that I know. And I was beat them apart. And suddenly the, one of them attacked me. And I used the Riminaki technique. I I, I, I hit his uh, no. hair. Okay. What's Riminaki? Riminaki it's a, uh, it is a technique that you use one arm. You can use one arm and hit uh, uh, your opponent in this area. And you can make him fall down. And I used this technique. It was very fast. I, I even didn't notice uh, how, how did I use it. Sometimes I feel that uh, because you're training for too long, you don't notice what, what techniques you have applied on your opponent. It is only the one situation because I don't like uh, violence. <laughs> mm -hmm. I only have course, this principle. If, if someone attack, okay, he, I must uh, uh, give him. You have, you have no choice. Yes, yeah. I have no choice. Yeah, so it's just like the philosophy of Aikido, using your opponent the power and to defend the yourself by yeah. his uh, attacking. Yeah, cool. So, but here maybe there is a conflict between using power or using without power. So how do you think that, okay, if we don't use power and uh, where the power can be specific, let's say, some people said, okay, training Kung Fu, you don't need to train in your muscle. Right? Some people mm. use the in Tai Chi, some masters or the participants, they have this feeling as well. So I don't need training my master. 
you know how do you think uh, about this uh, I, I think we training know. muscle is very important in every mm -hmm. sport you know it is something like protect your uh, you know your uh, how to say one tier in English <laughs> quite joy uh, to protect yes joints yes uh, to protect your joints from uh, any injuries you know because it is uh, if you don't train it it is something like um, very very easy to to get injured injured so important to have muscles of course in your training i feel it is something like protection for your, your whole body and i feel that uh, you can practice uh, uh, any martial artist without any muscles i feel it is something like um weird and not uh, complete uh for power technique may some some of martial arts it needs power but power with technique like boxing and kung fu and something like this but if we if we talk about uh, uh, aikido or uh, judo judo it's sometimes they make um uh, if uh, sometimes judo make use of uh, uh, the opponent direction in the converse way to to pull them out throw throw them away and sometimes aikido tai chi uh, judo it is something like in the same line they are not very powerful or they need uh, more techniques and more, more than power. Because if you apply it only power without uh, perfect technique, it's not uh, the applied that good way. Okay, here I would like to uh, uh, particularly particularly highlight it again. So you mean for Tai Chi, Aikido, and the Judo, the techniques is much more important than the power? Yeah, I must apply techniques, apply techniques more than both. That was just my my opinion because they are the same direction, the same way of thinking mm -hmm. of the philosophy, the okay. same philosophy. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I think the judo some sometimes you also uh, quite uh, similar with the wrestling, right? Yes, yes. In a sort of way, yeah. So they see the why <laughs> people use to to name that uh, uh, tai chi is uh, the called the closing combating. So for example, if we mm. kick boxing, you know, it's the with distance and you can kick, yeah. you have space to kick. Yes. But Tai Chi is the, like the way of uh, using your technique in the very uh, closed space, in a very closed situation. And yeah, it's mm. the most, uh, uh, is the, let's say, is the most uh, closed uh, martial arts with uh, the wrestling, or as I said, maybe Aikido and Judo. They are quite uh, closed. Tai Chi yes, and yes, wrestling yes. They are quite closed as well. Okay, thank you. And uh, I believe that uh, yeah, with many guys and uh, the masters, you share the same opinion and uh, way. I think it's uh, proper. It's the proper way. And uh, okay. Back then, now, uh, could you share with us that um, how you learn Chinese and what kind okay, of mistake you made uh, in the way of learning Chinese? You know, uh, when I was learning Chinese, I didn't um, uh, think more perfect about the tones that is very important in Chinese. And because that our material to learning Chinese, it was very, very, a lot of them, you know, there's uh, a lot of materials to study, and you you don't have enough time to master the Chinese tunes. <laughs> so that was my mistake. Uh, please, I, I, I forget. Just a moment. Yeah. So you mean to learn Chinese in the very beginning, the tones doesn't really yeah. matter. I mean, you're sort of aware. yes. I I think that it was really matter to master every every tones, and it was uh, something like kestra, you know. And you mean it <clears> matters, <throat> or it doesn't matter in the very beginning. Um, in beginning in, in our studies they, they told them they, uh, they told us that the tones is very important for every Chinese letter okay? mm -hmm. and because in our day we study a lot of materials I felt that to master every tune perfectly I will not come I will not finish the lesson I will not finish it because mm -hmm. we have a lot of lectures and you know this is something uh, boring academic style you know <laughs> sometimes I feel academic style. It's something like boring, you know, because you study the language in every part of it and a lot of materials like literature, literature and the translation is very important, of course. 
and it's some of the materials about Chinese history and the conflict without Japan and uh yeah uh, the the conflict was uh, because of the drugs that uh, was in China and they tried to um to to influence uh, on Chinese people to occupy the land and uh, I studied Chinese first year it was very really, very hard to uh, shift to Ukraine from learning letters to learning some hands that codes was really hard to learn it at the beginning and after uh, the, I completed my first year and started my second the Chinese codes almost maybe get easier than before and one after my third time my third year I feel it's okay with Hanzi it's no problem with Chinese codes okay you feel okay with Hanzi to write it yeah I write it every day <laughs> Okay, cool. And on the fourth year, I feel that Chinese is you know, it's easy, no problem. In my first year, and fourth year, and uh, after I have finished my study, I feel that my listening has has led a lot of problems. You know, too many uh, similarity in Chinese pronunciation. Like you know, for someone he you know only Chinese uh, have um, a lot of how how in the third tone and the fourth tone and second tone. Mm -hmm. You know. About uh, if I see myself about the lamb, the lamb that's called um, in Chinese danza, yes, uh, uh, the chair, it's also danza. So, you know, when you are listening to Chinese language, it is according to every situation. You can use your brain a little in the first. After that, I try to uh, master my tunes um, by practice. I, I choose to practice and uh, oral speak a lot with the Chinese people uh, to enhance my uh, my listening and my speaking. Because almost um, in every situation that you use something and you have a mistake, you can remember it. If you don't have mistake in language, you never uh, learn it. It is you know, something like um, uh, rules for learning languages. So okay. I I started to 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 speak Chinese every every day almost maybe more than eight hours, more than eight hours. At more least. than eight hours. Every, uh, Yes, at my work. Even if, okay. even if I, I finish my work, I, I try to speak with my colleagues. I, I try to speak Chinese a lot. Actually, this is how I learn my English. Yeah. I use it to, you know, work with some like uh, solar industry. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I translate the, the, the technology of solar uh, to Chinese. Because at the mm -hmm. moment, uh, uh, around uh, 10 years ago, you know, uh, China, the solar industry was rising up so much. So a lot of material uh, are quite new for us and technology. Uh, I use it to translate uh, quite a lot. And I also, I speak with uh, the, the engineers from across the world uh, and to, to understand the technology in solar industry also to practice my English. But here, okay, yeah. I would like to uh, ask you how, why do you think a Chinese character is not so challenging to write? For many of the uh, Westerners, they think, oh my gosh, the Chinese language, the character is unbelievable to write. You know, it's, it's so difficult for them. But for you, it seems like a piece of cake. Yes, after four years, <laughs> it's not after four years. You mean okay? Yes, after four years. Yes, after many many uh, times of uh, trying to type Chinese letters, you know, mm -hmm. my first uh, uh, my first year it was very challenging for me. After I I finished the study of Chinese code of every lesson, I forget it. You know, it is not easy. <laughs> okay, you, you mean in the very beginning, it's uh, not uh, so easy to. Yes, to, I forget a lot of Chinese code. Yes, it is very hard. Even after many hours of studies, uh, study uh, by night, you know, and the next morning, if I if the uh, the teacher to, told me what how to write uh, this Chinese code, uh, many of them I forget. It. I forget them. You know, I feel very impressed, you know, and yeah, disappointed, of course. Cool. All right. Yeah. But you. Uh, but how? What kind of uh, the driving energy? 
to make you keep going up if it's so challenging? You know, sometimes you you give your your uh, self a push. You see that not everyone uh, in in this uh, department is very smart enough to learn Chinese, and you must give yourself a time to learn. And I felt that I must be disciplined to the language to learn it. You know, because it is hard language, not easy. And uh, I I spend a lot of hours to in in Chinese uh, to study Chinese codes, many hours really. Every day I try to type a lot to master them. And by time and by practice, by reading, you know, I I, I reach a good level. Yeah, okay. So for me, to practice English for, you know, eight to 10 hours a day for, I guess, three years, when I listened up the news, the news, the journalists, they speak some news. I, it was still quite challenging for me. So I remember I was very depressed. I didn't have a, a teacher whom teach me. Of course, in the college and in the high school, we practiced. But at that moment, I was very, let's say, naughty. I was out of my mind in the class all the time. Mm -hmm. But after uh, finish uh, education, I have to, you know, practice because my job need, need, needed me to to speak with the foreigner engineers to to negotiate with them in no matter technology or the business. So but I feel like you. I feel, oh my gosh, man, am I smart enough to to um, to be capable of learning English? Uh, but luckily, I didn't give up. I remember I was very depressed, but uh, I said, okay, I will keep learning one month more. If I still, you know, stuck in this uh, uh, situation, which is uh, cannot understand what they are talking about, uh, I will quit. I, I didn't. Yeah, something like you. Okay, thank you for your sharing about your welcome, yeah, uh, Chinese studying and also uh, Aikido training. So, uh, now, what are you uh, mostly doing as a freelancer? And uh, also, how you balance uh, your job with the, I mean, for freelancer, you have flexibility of yes, you know, your time schedule. But uh, maybe yes. the stability is uh, something uh, lake of. Uh, we are doing similar. I'm a freelancer as well. So how you balance the flexibility and the stability? In Aikido training, in our uh, Wushu training as well, we must find the balance between the stability and the flexibility, right? So, mm, yes, of course. Yeah. How you get uh, this balance? I get this balance, you know, after I decided to get my freelance job, uh, I felt that I have a lot of free time. And after I had a free time, something like boring at first, you know, because you have busy schedule every day. And uh, and after that, after this, uh, this many years, you feel that you have a lot of free time. Uh, so I decided to uh, work on my Chinese every day. I tried to find a friend to talk in Chinese, maybe three hours a day. And at night, I, I go to uh, Aikido training and try to listen to my coach. I, I see what is the... Uh, which is my where is my mistake? What I I still not master good enough for uh, Aikido. I even tried to go another uh, master in my hometown, and he see his style, his flexibility, and even I asking him about his flexibility, how to make this uh, flexibility. He said by making warm up very good every day, and you have you can get this flexibility in in your in your uh, body and your in your training. So I, I love to listen to different point of views in even in my training. And they see different styles, of course. Because every master has his own style in Aikido. Uh, but there is coming, of course, uh, style, uh, training and even techniques. But sometimes they, they apply techniques with different ways also, but it's the same results in the end. And, uh, you know, 
uh, because of my free time and not to get that uh, very uh, boring, I start to, to to study a new language or try to make some reading every day. And now I started to uh, learn a German language. Learning uh, German. Yes, I started to learn German, and of course to work on my English because of my I do not feel satisfied with my English yet, and I try to listen to podcasts and uh, to YouTube channels. Uh, I I'm trying to study with a different way in English because you know you to make a study like a course and to be settled for a course for a longer time sometimes you feel bored. But I am listening to podcasts maybe more than in. Um, oh, actually, I just came back from Germany. I practiced a tiny uh, bit of German as well. All right, so now I will give you a very, could be quite a challenging question. Okay, can you sum up Aikido mm. in a short words by Chinese? Okay. Uh... To describe what is Aikido in Chinese? 我可以说的那个和吃到的是一个和吃到我可以说的跟那个中国的青鸟的青鸟差不多的因为你如果看到了那个青鸟说的在小林寺他们用那个他们都是用他们都是用那个地地球方面在那个关贴的包括这些东西